What's up? It's your Chic Mortgage Millennial coming to you with a video about some mortgage things. So thanks so much for coming again. See, I didn't take too long to make another video. So what I'm going to try to do is make these videos let's say once a week, maybe twice a week. You just never know. Like you never know how my week is going to go, but I'm going to try to do it in the beginning of my day on either Tuesday or Thursday. That's when I record it. All right. So today I wanted to come to you all with five things that you want to consider if you are still interested in purchasing a house in this market because as the market shifts we have to be able to create strategies on being successful reaching our goals all of those fun stuff you can't approach every market the same and so in being more strategic i'm going to just give you some things that you want to consider um, to make the best decision for you which ultimately will be purchasing a home um, because people still want to buy. I'm still getting calls. I'm still getting applications. I think that it's just good if people know what they're getting into. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. That way you all don't see my laptop. Okay, that's better. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing that you want to consider is the amount that you are pre-approved for or the amount that you're eligible for. Um, because right now, pre-approvals, they're typically good for 30 I say 30, but technically we don't have to repull your credit for either 90 days or 120 days. So normally that's about how good the pre-approval is, um, 90 to 120 days is usually the expiration date. I say 30 because I like for people to check in um, just to make sure that their situation hasn't changed, that interest rates haven't impacted the amount that they're eligible for. So that is something that even if you're not working with me and you have a lender that might not be checking in or looking even if i don't reach out i'm paying attention to the market so the amount that you're pre-approved for can change um, because as interest rates go high or as interest rates increase your monthly payment is going to increase um so let's say if you've been shopping on a pre-approval letter for months and months at a time, you don't want to go under contract and then find out that you're running into a DTI issue, debt to income ratio issue during the process. So that's why I say you always want to be aware, be cautious, check in just to see if interest rates have impacted the amount that you're pre-approved for. Because the higher the interest rate, typically the less house you can afford. And we get calls all the time where people are like, oh, I just want to know what's my max, what's my max, how much am I eligible for? So if you're getting pre-approvals with your maximum amount, then you really want to make sure that a half a percent increase or a 1% increase in interest rates or even more, depending on when you started, isn't impacting your pre-approval amount. So that is a major thing that you want to consider in this market, all right? So number two is buy down options available. Now, there are so many different things that are coming back into light because as the market shifts, lenders, we wanna make sure that you have different options to get you in a house. And um, buy downs, I'm seeing so many different buy down options. Um, there's three, two, one buy downs, two, one buy downs, um, and people are seeing these different terms, but they really don't understand kind of what it is, but it's really cool. So for example, um, with us, you can do a three, two, one buy down, um, for conventional, conventional loan has three, two, one buy down options. What that means is let's say if your interest rate is 7%, then the first year, your payment is going to be, well, your interest rate is going to be 3% lower. So it'll be 4%. And then the next year, year two, you're going to be 2% lower. So you'll be paying a monthly payment as though your interest rate is 5%. And then the next year, three, two, one, one, your interest rate is going to be 6%. And then for years, four through 30, you'll be back to the 7% interest rate or monthly payment. Now, the biggest thing with that is many people are going to refinance once the rates go back down, whether they go back down to 6%, 5%, 4%, we don't know. But once the market shifts, 
we're going to see a lot more refinancing. So with this option, it's good because you might never feel that 7% monthly payment. Does that make sense? It's better to see it. We have calculators available. So if you want to actually see what it looks like, feel free to let me know. But it's pretty cool. And you can do these buy downs by seller concessions, seller paying closing costs, um, or even your builder. Uh, basically, there is a certain amount that the 321 buy down cost, there's a cost for it, um, or for you to, you decide to do a 21 buy down. And that money sits in an account, kind of like an escrow, but it's not called an escrow account, but sits in an account and they allocate it towards your monthly payment to be able to give you that three, two, one buy down. So a lot of people have asked like, oh, well, what happens to the money whenever you decide to refinance? Let's say if you decide to refinance in a year, the money that's in that account is going to go towards your principal balance. So paying down your principal balance. So for example, let's say that the, let's say $10,000 was the cost of your buy down, right? And then after a year, maybe you still have $7,000 left over. So that $7,000 would go towards paying down your principal balance if you decide to refinance during that three, two, one buy down phase. So it's basically a win-win for buyers. And I think that a lot of people just don't understand it, don't know what it means but if sellers are willing to pay concessions because now you're seeing that a lot of sellers are then you you won't feel that high monthly payment now the thing is you still have to qualify with the highest interest rate so if your qualifying interest rate is seven percent then you have to make sure your DTI, everything, the underwriter is going to approve you based off of that higher interest rate. So a lot of people don't understand that part, but it's that's an important piece of the puzzle as well. Um, so three, two, one, buy down, two, one, buy down options. Get to know what options are available, but that can help ease, in the, ease, ease the load of these high monthly payments that these interest rates are causing. Because a lot of people, they might be shopping, but they're like, I can't afford this, this is too high. So in being strategic, people who are strategic planners, they are going to be refinancing anyway. So get the house, this is a part of that whole, marry the house, date the right season. Um, use those buy downs. If you are working with um, a lender and they don't offer two one buy downs, find one that is because a lot of them should be or come to me all right so that's that know what buy down options avail are available get into these three two one buy downs because it's really good it's a win-win no money out of the buyer's pocket it's all based off of seller contributions or builder contributions so the next thing that i want you all to be aware of is going to be saving i always say this because this is the biggest thing when it comes to buying a house like you have to save if you're wanting to buy a house you must save you must save you must save 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 because as interest rates are increasing your monthly payment is increasing which means your dti is usually going to be on the higher end in this market and a lot of people don't understand that down payment assistance programs typically are going to have lower DTI requirements, lower debt to income ratio requirements, which means the amount of houses you can afford on a um, down payment assistance program is usually going to be less than if you were putting your own down payment down. There's no such thing as free money, right? So with these down payment assistance programs, there's usually gonna be different, what should I say? There's usually going to be different um, guidelines that require you. Some will require you to repay it back over a certain period. Um, some are forgiven after five years. Some are forgiven after three years. Like you want to know that there is not free money. And then typically, or sometimes, the interest rate is also higher with down payment assistance than it would be if you put down your own down payment. So those that are saving, you can receive benefits as a first time home buyer by putting down your own down payment. You don't need down payment assistance if you don't need it. 
So you just want to understand that in this market, if you are looking to do down payment assistance, compare what it would be if you put your own down payment down. Okay. So with that, that means save, 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 save. Remember, save, save, save. And that kind of leads me into number four. So number four, this is a pay to play market. You know, there are so many different programs out there, um, non-QM, traditional, some people are even using hard money loans. Like whenever it's a situation where the masses cannot afford to pay to play, the people who can will. Those who can will. That's something that I've heard. I get that from uh, my husband. My husband says, dad used to, say, used to say that all the time, but those who can will. And so there are people who have the funds, have the money, who are trying to scoop up and get, scoop in, dive into this market and get these houses off the market because they are, they know that people are going to need to rent. Um, people are still using Airbnbs, Pure Space, you know, all of these different things. So this is a pay to play market. And those who understand that they will buy a house um, and they will continue to invest in real estate. I hate that people are saying, you know, oh, this isn't a first time home buyer market. It is, but first time home buyers have to educate themselves. And most of the time, they operate off of fear because it's like, oh, interest rates are high. My mom told me not to buy. My grandma told me not to buy. My uncle told me not to buy. But the people who can, they're still buying. And my thing is, you have to understand the incentives. What's the incentive right now to buy? There are so many homes. I was looking at homes yesterday. There are so many homes on the market in price ranges that were just not available about let's say four months ago, five months ago, like those houses gone, gone. Right now they're on the market. So if you're an investor, you have that investor mindset, or even if you are just trying to make the best decision for your financial situation, buy. It's still a good time to buy. This is a pay to play market. So that's why I'm saying you have to save. You have to make sure that you know, you're know you meeting the requirements when it comes to your DTI because as interest rates are higher, your debt to income ratio is higher. So you might have to pay down some debt to qualify. You might have to um, increase your down payment to qualify. When we're restructuring these loans and people are coming into um, situations where their DTI is a little bit over the limit, but they want that house, there are people who are willing to increase their um, down payment. It's not really the minimum down payment season. Like some people, yes, FHA loans have a minimum down payment of, uh, th I know that three, three and a half percent. Um, conventional, if you're a first time home buyer, you could put down uh, 3% or 5% if it's your primary residence. So people who are looking for those minimums, if you don't have any wiggle room, it's just two different mindsets. There are some people you can easily be like, okay, in order for you to qualify for this amount of house, you're gonna have to put down 10%. You're gonna have to put down 20%. I have people who's like, hey, I wanna put down 100,000. I wanna put down 30%. Those are the people who are buying in this market. So it is a, definitely a pay to play, pay to play market. Um, buy, if you can, those who can will. So just think about it. If they're still buying, there's a reason. You don't want to be left out. You don't want to you don't want to be one of those people who just never have the opportunity to buy because you're waiting for it to be cool for everyone. This is a pay to play market. That's number 4. All right, so number 5, this is a last tip and thing that you can you should consider even though there's so many different things you should consider if you're trying to buy a house in this market. Understand your why. So when I say understand your why, that is gonna be so important because in sales, a good salesperson always tries to figure out, okay, what's in it for the client? What's in it for the buyer? Because that is how buyers are going to think. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? So in order to do that, you have to understand your why. Understanding your why is understanding the incentive for you to buy. Now let's say I'm a salesperson. I want you to buy because at the end of the day, yes, I do get paid, right? I don't work for free. I don't work for free. 
But in order for me to sell you a house, in order for me to sell you a mortgage, I can't tell you like, hey, you need to buy so I can feed my family. No, you're not going to listen to that. You don't care. You don't care about my family as much as I know that y'all love me. Y'all don't care about my family, but it's all about what's in it for you, the client, right? So that could be maybe you have a situation where you're relocating. You're relocating and you are looking for a primary residence. You're looking at rental rates and it's just too high. So you keep saying for all of that, I should just buy a house. You have the money, you have the income, you have the credit, and you're like, I'm going to buy. That's your why. You're relocating, rent is too high, you're going to buy. Or maybe your um, lease is up, you're looking for things, you know that you want to be in a good area, you know that you have kids, you need a good school system, um, but everything in those areas are high to death. Rent is ridiculous. Okay, let me see if I should buy. Another reason, you're an investor and you're like, hey, it's hot. It's a hot season right now for investors. I need to get in this action. I need to see what I need to do, see what programs are available, see what traditional programs are available, see what non-QM programs are available, even see what hard money loans are out there. Your why is that, y'all hear those fire trucks? Your why is that you're looking to make more money. This is a business for you. Real estate is a business. That is your why. Another why could be, hey, I want some land. The list of reasons can go on and on and on. But when you're purchasing a house, not even just in this market, but anytime, you have to understand your why. Your why is going to help combat what everybody else is saying because you're gonna understand the goal. You're gonna always go back to, okay, this is why I'm doing this, let me stick with it. This is why I'm saving. This is why I'm fixing my credit. This is why I'm going to work every day and I wanna quit this job and be self-employed. I can't quit this job because I need a salary to qualify. Understand your why and that is gonna help motivate you to reach your goal. Those are the five things that I really think that you should consider in this market. I hope that you found them valuable. And if you are interested in a mortgage, because that's what I do, that's what I do. Okay, make sure that you reach out to me. Um, my website is allisonmccarden.com, first and last name. Um, I have so many different tools, resources, programs. All you have to do is just start the process and understand what it is that you need to do to get pre-approved. I am licensed in Georgia, Mississippi, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia, and newly Maryland. Yes. So if you're in any of those states, feel free to reach out to me for mortgage pre-approval. Um, if you're not in those states, I can still refer to other states because our company is licensed in all 50 states. Um, so usually I just set up the loan and refer it on over, but you will have a great loan officer who can assist you. Um, so thanks for tuning into this video. I really wanted to make sure that I am more consistent. I'm trying. I appreciate you all for watching and just being loyal. It's so cool when um, you all say that you actually watch and like my videos. So feel free to share, like, and subscribe. Make sure that you do all that fun stuff. Follow me on social media, Chic Mortgage Millennial on everything. Alrighty, so y'all have a good day.